Can we turn our Bibles please to the book of 1 Kings chapter 18? 1 Kings 18, and I'll read from verse 30 to 39. Amen. I will read from the New King James Version. In as much as I like to read the Old King James Version, because I believe the Old King James Version is spiritual. When you hear thou art, you know. But because today is Youth Sunday, so let's speak in a youth English. Amen. The Bible says, Then said Elijah to all the people, Come near to me. So all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar. If the Bible is yours, or you have an electronic one, you can actually underline that. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And this is actually a very important one as well. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob to whom the word of the Lord came saying Israel shall be your name. Then with the 12 stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold the waters seers of seed to hold two seers of seed verse 33 and he put the wood in order and he cut the bull in pieces and laid it on the wood and said fill four water pots with water and pour it on the bond sacrifice and on the wood then he said in verse 34 do it a second time and they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did a third time. So the water ran all around the altar. And he also filled the trench with water. Verse 36. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. That Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel. Let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word hear me O Lord hear me that these people may know that you are the Lord God and you have turned their hearts back to you again verse 38 then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the bond sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and it licked up the water that was in the trench verse 39 now when all the people saw when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord God, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, Lord in heaven, we want to thank you for another opportunity to listen to you. And Lord in heaven, I ask that you anoint my lips of clay, that I say nothing of myself, but that which you want your people to hear. Lord in heaven, I pray that you release your engrafted and implanted word that is able to save our souls and even grant us inheritance among them that are sanctified. At the end of today's service, we want all glory and all glory to be yours. Father, we we'll give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. There is an interesting movement which um, seems to be happening around these days. You know, Interestingly, the, the older generation, the way they will see God or the way they talk about God is almost kind of different from the way the younger generation will see God. You know, in the terms of the founding fathers or the spiritual fathers, so to speak, a few of them now are beginning to correct some of the things which they had taught us in time past. Because somehow they discovered that um, the knowledge was passed on but for some reason, some way, somehow, it was not balanced. And I make bold to say that most of them now, now revisit some of the messages which they have preached before, and they now try to create the balance in the balance of what's happening now. During the COVID years, quite a lot of things came to pass that most people's eyes started getting open. Somehow good, somewhat bad. Because all of a sudden, some people just felt, okay, you know what? I have an online pastor and I'm good to go. You know, I can do everything online and it's so fine. You know, I can do this in an instant. I can pick and choose. You know, the way you can binge watch these days on Netflix and you just pick and choose your TV stations. And the TV stations who are just dwelt, who are remaining in the 
analog phase, they are beginning to wonder we must do something differently. If not, we are losing our audience. In the same vein, we have a word now that somehow to a large extent, people are very instant in what they're looking for. And that's why you see the movement of sometimes, you know, of <laughs> so many things. I don't want to call the names that, okay, 5 a.m. this morning, you know, use this phrase, you know, use that phrase, and that's all you need. You don't even need to study the word of God. You don't even need to be in depth. Just do skabash for like about 110 times, and that's it. It settles it. But the younger generation, they believe in looking at things logically. You know, when you explain something to them, I know my boys when they were growing up. You know, when you say something to them, they would ask you why. You know, the difference between a boss and um, someone who is working for the boss is the boss understands why some things are done the way they are done. Some other person just know how to do it. A technician just knows, just take this rod and put it in this, uh, um, in this machine and that's it. He has done it many times over and he's so good at it. He's done it, he's doing it with, a, with speed. Whereas the engineer understands the reason why he's designing that to go that way. And if he has some other requirement, he has to change and modify what he needs to do. I will try not to speak as a project manager this morning, but today I want to talk about understanding process. We, like I said, we've had many things that have been said to us. And no doubt, God is all-powerful. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 1, it says, Oh, that thou would rend the heavens. God can do and undo. There is no, I mean, there is no doubt about that. It's unquestionable the kind of might which our God has. You know, God can call and make things out of what does not exist to exist. The Bible says in an, in, 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 uh, in an account, in um, 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 17, you know, it says, you will not even hear the sound. You will not even hear the wind. He said, but the drenches will be filled with water. That is God. He can do, he can, he can call things to existence, even if there are no processes in place. It's about the fact remains that I believe we're in a situation whereby we must balance the wisdom of the elders and also the wisdom of the young ones. The Bible says, in, in, uh, the Bible says remove not the ancient landmark which our forefathers have set. Do you understand? Remove not those things which you've learned from the old ones. You know, the old ones believe so much in the power of God. If there is, you have a headache, just, just pray. You are trusting the God for a job, just pray. There is nothing so wrong in that. But where it is lost in translation is that we now have Christians, our pews are so filled with people looking for magic. And that is the truth. You know, people just want things to just happen without understanding that everything has got process in time. On a lighter note, uh, a while ago I was talking to someone at work. And he was saying to me, he was just complaining, the missus is getting on my nerves, this is happening, da, 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 da. And I said, let me explain. I said, oh, she's complaining that, um, because they just have a baby, you know. I said, oh, she's complaining that all of a sudden now she can't go out and you are going out with your friends. He said, yes, how did you know? Oh, she's complaining now that um, when, she, when you get back home, it should be your turn to also take, uh, take over with the, with the child because now she too wants to sleep. She said, how do you know? He said, well, I've gone to work all day. I said, yes. I said, trust me, I've been there. By the grace of God, next year will be 25 years in marriage. I can tell you different faces of things which they will go through. I said, at that point in time, she's looking at you. I've given up my career. Now I'm looking fat. Now you're still going around with the boys, feeling cool. Now I have a baby. You've gone to work. Yes, I understand and I appreciate that. But when you're back home, it's your turn to look after the baby. And the guy is wondering, no, I'm the man of the house. What do you mean? To go and change pampers or change diapers in the middle of the night? I'm going to work tomorrow morning. And she goes, yes, but tomorrow morning I'll be left alone with this baby. So little things like that now brings friction. Or you get to a point whereby they are now becoming teenagers. You know, at that point in time, it's another thing again you have to deal with. I remember my elder, uh, elder son when he had his first car when he was 18. And most of those times I used to travel a lot for one thing or the other. And, all. and sometimes I would just ask, where is um, where so and so? They said, oh, he's left the house. The mom would say, I don't know where he is. I would ask the younger ones, where are you? They said, I don't know. And I now called him one day and said, how come when you're leaving the house, you don't tell anybody where you're going to? And he goes, boy, it's my car. Oh, I said, oh, it's your car. Can I have the keys? <laughs> You know, one of the day, I mean, most of the time when they want to go out, of course, we try to encourage them to socialize 
I would believe that somehow they're responsible enough to know what to do and know what not to do. On a particular day, he went for a party. Don't report me to church services. On a particular day, he went to a party, and at 11 o'clock, we started calling him. He was nowhere. We were calling, where are you? At some point, he switched off his phone. The mom was worried. I was worried. After some point, maybe around 2 a.m., we, we managed to just try and go and sleep. Sometimes, maybe around 3 or 4 a.m. or something, I decided to go to the gents, and I said, let me even go and check this boy if he's back home. And there he was snoring. <laughs> I want to tell you what I did. <laughs> Amen. You know, so there is process which God has set in time. The Bible is talking about even Jesus himself in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. He says, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Even if you know where you're going, even if you know what God wants to do through you, there is a process which must be put in place, which you must go through. Enough of all this trying to pray and believe that God is going to do magic. You know, you've, we're, we're in a situation where by now, technology is such that it is moving at a pace. And you have to move with it. I'm not saying you must become um, um, a computer genius or something. But you need to find ways to retrain yourself. You need to find ways to put yourself and say to yourself, this is where I'm at right now. Where am I going to? And it's not so much about you even having to become a computer genius or, um, I mean, excuse me from using computers because, of course, we're in an age whereby technology just stares us in the face. You know, but you need to find a way whereby you know that this is where God is taking you and you need to put that process in place. Most times, process might not be that convenient. Sometimes it might not be that, uh, it might not come to you as natural as it were. When you look at that scripture which we read in the book of um, First uh, Kings chapter 12, the Bible talks about, you know, there are so many things written in the Bible which was not written for, for mistakes. He said, and Elijah took 12 stones and he repaired the altar and he laid the stones one upon the other. All through the Bible, when you see 12 stones being mentioned in the Bible, there's quite a few places in the Bible where the Bible talks about 12 stones. It has deeper meanings which I don't I don't think I have enough time to go into that this morning. You see, but it talks about due order. It talks about process. It talks about precept being upon precept. In Isaiah chapter 28, verse, verse 10, the Bible talks about precept must be upon precept, line upon line. At every stage, there is something which God expects you to learn. When you finish learning that at that stage, you move to another level. God expects you to learn another thing. And it happens in every phase of life. Be it spiritual, be it academic, be it marital, there are so many things which God expects you to learn in different phases and in different stages. You know, because sometimes we find ourselves, we are praying for something, we are praying and we are saying, God, come and deliver me. But God is saying, I've given you wisdom to act. I've given you wisdom to understand what you need to do. But most of the time, we want to suspend that aspect and just leave everything to God, sort it out. You know, I don't like saying this, but one of the things which, is, which has affected the African continent is that somehow we try to suspend our thinking and we feel the supernatural will resolve everything that we're going through. All of a sudden, everybody is in a church and thinking that will affect the things that is happening in the society. When the, when the Europeans, when they went to Africa, you know, I paused because I'm thinking of this, um, <laughs> I'm thinking seriously how to put this without, uh, because I know we're being watched online and stuff like that. When the Europeans went to Africa, and they went to Africa, they went to India, they went to all those places, you know, there was a reason why most of it was not because they actually want everyone to go to the kingdom of God, you know, but they had to bring religion because religion was the easiest way of control. But somehow, <laughs> the African man took everything whole like and sinker. But the Indians, for example, they wanted knowledge. They wanted to understand technology. They said, don't, dissolve, don't tamper with our religion. Don't tamper with our way of dressing. But the African wanted to just be like the white man. Because in their mind, they felt they saw the picture that the white man is like the symbol of God. But someone said some time ago that actually Jesus was actually black. But I don't want to go there. You know, so, but... <laughs> 
You know, so, but, but the fact remains, the religion was used to control the mind of the African man. And it's still happening today. You know, we're in church. There are some basic things that we need to learn. You're planning to go into marriage. You've not read one book on marriage. You're planning to do a business. You've not read some books about wealth creation. I read a book a while ago, um, The Jewish Phenomenon by, I think, Stephen Silbiger or something. And it talks about the seven keys to the enduring wealth of a people. As in some things are deliberate. They learn some things deliberately. You know, growing up, my boys, when they were in their teenage years, I started giving them books on hacking. I give them, <laughs> someone looked up and looked at me as in hacking, <laughs> why? I started giving books on ethical hacking, you know, learn about some of these technologies even before you even get into the corporate world. There are some basic things that you need to know about. There are some basic things you need to inform yourself with. You know, because at the end of the day, you are going to trade in a society that has so many other people as well, and you need to be informed. Amen. But somehow we see Christians, they don't want to, they don't want to put in the work. We want to pray, yes. We want to fast, yes. But we don't want to put in the work. There are quite a number of places in the Bible when you're talking about process. It gives us, it explains to us that process is actually a function of time. In Genesis chapter 4 verse 3, it talks in the process of time. I'll just give a few. I will not go into all those stories. Some of them are just uh, different stories. But I'm just trying to just bring that correlation between process and time. Genesis 38 verse 12, Exodus 2 verse 23, George 11 verse 4, 2 Corinthians 21 verse 9. It all talks about process of time. So what is time, for example? Time is a component of various measurements used to sequence events and to compare the duration of events of intervals between them and to quantify rates of change of quantity in material reality or in the conscious experience. Just ignore my grammar. But let's go into what is process. Process is a series of actions of steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. So the question is this. What are you designing? What canvas are you painting? What picture are you painting? Where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in ten? I said to someone a while ago, there are two main questions in life which is always good to have an answer for. What will you do if money was not a problem? And what will you do if you know that you cannot fail? Think about that for a minute. What will you do if money was not a problem? What business will you be in? What will you build? What would you invest in if money was not a problem? And what will you do if that business that you will do, if you know that that business cannot fail, what will it be? You know, sometimes we, we, people sit down and they're praying for breakthroughs, they're praying for money. But sometimes you ask some people, if, for example, I just give you a million pounds, what will you do with it? Ah, I will show my neighbor that I've arrived. <laughs> <laughs> In that village, they would take. My house will be bigger than Dangote's. What would you do if money was... If God gives you a blank check now to write a figure on it, what will that figure be? I was talking to someone a while ago and he said to me, all I need is two million naira. Ah! And they would take... I said, two million naira? <laughs> you spend that in two seconds. What would you do if money was not a problem? You know, sometimes in, 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 in Christian circles, the reason why at times preachers use the word money, there was a day I was, um, I was at the train station, and there were these two ladies, they were talking, and they, they, the conversation got interesting. I, I, just, I was listening, I was like, this is interesting. You know, and they were talking, and they were like, oh, these churches, they like money too much, they're always talking about money, and this other church that I go to, they don't talk about money, but everything is just in disarray, everything is just anyhow. So the conversation went on, and at some point I couldn't take it anymore. I just turned to them and said, sorry. I said, I'm actually hearing what you guys are saying. I said, do you mind? Can I contribute? And they were like, okay. I said, okay. I said, can I ask just one or two questions, though? I said, the church that you're complaining that they like money too much, I said, the music is on point, right? She said, yes. I said, the place is cozy. She said, yes. I said, but the other church where you feel 
they don't talk about money, but everything is just anyhow. The musicians don't know how to play. The place is not even fine. The place is just. I said, How did you know? I said, Okay. I said, But have you ever asked yourself that that place that looks as if everything is on point is actually money that they used to maintain it? She kept quiet. I said, You know, I don't know the pastor. I didn't ask what's the pastor's name. And it's not me trying to defend who the pastor is. I said, But there is a process which those ones have put in place. And that's why they can do those things. I said, if they now go excess, that's a different thing entirely. I'm not going there. I said, but to get those things which they are talking about, they've been able to put money to do those things. I said, so give the pastor a break and pray for them that God will send resources. And both of them started laughing. So what am I saying? There are some times whereby we forget that everything in life, like I said, every single thing in life has got process. So when you talk about time, what does time bring? You know, I joked earlier talking about being married for 25 years. Well, it's not a joke, actually. <laughs> it's a fact. You know, you see, but the fact is, there are so many things which I have learned over time. As a young man, I dedicated myself to working with people way older than me because I believe there are so many things I can learn and so many things I can pick. And coincidentally, as God will allow, I did a lot of things very fast. You know, I finished secondary school at the age of 13 for status. So, and that tells you, to a large extent, I always was moving around with people way older than me. And of course, I still know how to move with people younger than me. Yeah, you can see my... <laughs> you know, but I believe that there are so many things which one can learn because they have understood what process is. You know, sometimes I say to my boys when they're in school, and they're like, oh, but school is this? I said, uh, thank God you have parents who, who went to school. And we're saying to you that this and this is what you need to do now. You need to delay this gratification now. You need to delay this and do this. This is what you need to do now. By the grace of God, we have um, four boys. We are blessed with four boys. And they are all into football. But for some strange reasons, I decided not to join any club. They all have four different clubs. And my wife decided to pick a club herself. You know, we have Man City, we have Man United, we have Liverpool, we have Chelsea. And the missus became uh, Arsenal. <laughs> so I do say that me, I don't even have any club because I can't shout. You know, so when they want to, and especially when there is Man U and Man United playing in the house, gosh, it's always what Those are the two older ones. The house literally would vibrate sometimes, you know, from, from, the, from the passion about football and everything. When the other one got into college, like I said, they all play football as well. When he got into college, he was doing maths and double maths and all the likes. And after some point, he said, well, I just want to play football. I kept quiet. <laughs> yeah, play football. When he got there, by the time they loaded him with a few assignments, one day I just said, ah, are you not going for training anymore? He goes, ah, I don't have time. I've got assignment to do. In my mind, I went back and like, <laughs> because at that point he discovered that this is time to leave childish things our third one that one when he was much younger in fact when he was very very young you would come downstairs and you see him watching classic football watching football of before I was born and I would see him like and when you ask some questions in eh, 1970 something match he would tell you who won the, I was like seriously how does that even help my life right now you know but he was so passionate about football that sometimes I just, I had to, we just had to just leave him to it. And the prayer is, very soon, when you see the real thing about life, you decide there is nothing wrong in pursuing football. Nothing at all. But one of the analyses which I gave to them was this. When you look at everyone who is making waves in football in the whole world, they are now up to a thousand. And when you look at the career span, how long is the career span? I know Atonia is praying for the son to play football. Yeah, God bless. Yeah. Would we'll root for you. Once he becomes a star, just remind yeah. <laughs> There is nothing wrong in playing football. You see, but we should always understand that there are some things you need to do part time. And there are some process you need to put into it. So one of the things I said to the boys was, look, I don't care if you play football, I don't care if you play basketball or you play badminton or cricket. Just give me one degree first. Then later you can decide and do whatever it is you want to do. Because one of the mistakes which 
most of the footballers make is sometimes they feel it's going to go on for so long. And a few of them, by the time their career stops, there is nothing to fall back on. Many years ago, I find it very hard when somebody asks me, what do you do? It used to, yeah, that question used to bother me in an interview. Because sometimes I'm like, okay, which bit do I say? Do I say, okay, I have a degree in engineering, or I've been in finance, or I've been in IT? Which one exactly do you want to know? So some things actually stop even removing from my CV. If I'm going for this, I just focus it. But if later per time we're now talking, so okay, actually, yeah, I actually have a degree in engineering. Like, okay. So how come you didn't tell? Well, I've been in finance for a while, so you didn't ask. So, but with time, you put yourself, you apply yourself into the things which you need to do and where you need to go per time. And it's the same for everything, be it marriage, be it relationships, be it whatsoever it is, you know, we need to apply ourselves and allow those things to grow. Amen. Let me give us um, five points which I believe um, time actually brings. You know, the, those books, I mean, it's something which you should read. I have some um, stuff here, but I'm just going to just uh, skip them because of our time. Like I said, if you want the title of the book, you should, you should ask. Um, you can see me later and I'll give you the title. It's a very, very good book. And it tells you the reason why the Jews, which we more or less as Christians are modeled after, why the Jews are a successful race. They believe in God, yes, but at the same time, they apply themselves to process. They understand the very keys. Everything in life has got laws. There is laws for success. There is laws for business. There is laws for academic um, excellence. There is laws for marriage. There is laws for relationship. Everything in life is built on laws. And God will not... Fine, sometimes God will suspend those laws to prove that he's God. He steps in and out of time when he wants to do his thing. But God has set those laws in place to guide us. And he expects us to follow process. You know, I was in a place sometimes I was talking at a meeting. And someone was like, where did you learn this from? And I laughed. And I said to, and I said to the man, I said, do you really want to know? He said, yeah, where did you learn all this? I said, actually, I learned it in church. Because unknown to you, the church has got every single department which you can grow in. You know, last week the pastor was talking about the, to my right, whether we need the, the angels there to shift and just um, be on guard and allow people to say. And I'm just wondering that sometimes God expects each and every one of us to apply ourselves in those areas and snap out of that way the, which the enemy is trying to use us to just relax. The word is enough for the voice. I will not say more than that. So what are the various things that time bring? It brings advancement, number one. It brings progress and transformation and growth. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, it says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I taught as a child. He said, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Amen. You know, so what are childish things? What are the things that you need to set aside? You know, during COVID, I, do, I try to use that um, experience because it is something which opened the eyes of the whole world at once. So one of the bits which actually pained me during COVID was that Christians did not really receive insight as to what God wanted to do during that period. That period was supposed to be a period of transfer of wealth. But most Christians did not see it. People had perceptions and businesses were formed. But then again, some businesses were dying. You know, there's something called the blue, uh, I mean, the blue ocean strategy. You know, you have the blue ocean, you have the red ocean, whereby in the red ocean you have markets, I mean, various markets and industries. They compete for space, compete for relevance. In blue ocean strategy, you know, you are, you are told to more or less step out and do something new, do the unexpected. But who will give that insight to something new if it's not God? And that is where the two marriage together. God will give you an insight which your neighbor would not see. But you still need process to get into that place. But sometimes Christians, we just want God to give us that insight. And we want God to go ahead and fulfill it as well. And that's why the Bible talks about, it said the children of this world, they are wiser than the children of light. 
a while ago I was in Nigeria and I was seeing things happening for real. And I was seeing everybody networking and plugging themselves. Thank God now a few pastors are beginning to wake to those real, I mean to that idea that most pastors now are going into business. Because what we were told before was once you pick up your Bible, believe in God, forget every other thing else. And I was saying something. Something used to annoy me. You know, the Bible talks about an error. Say the children, uh, the children are walking on like mere men and servants are riding on horses. You know, it used to really eck my spirit. Let's try this. When someone used to say, when someone mentioned the word analogy, what comes to your mind is, is a rich man with bigger brother. When they mention the word a pastor, the guy is waiting for Titus Paul. It's an error. When they say somebody is a child of God, he's believing in, he's, he's, he's using faith to trust God for food. When they say somebody is a criminal, he's a Yahoo boy, <laughs> he's bowling. Whereas when they say somebody is a child of God, what you should see is a blessed of the Lord. But somehow, the word has so swapped our mind and they have so changed it. And we just see it. When someone just says a pastor, you just look at her. Ah, oh, this pastor has come again. He wants money, he wants offering. Hungry. I pray the Lord will change that narrative in Jesus' name. So what are the things that time brings? It brings solutions and perceptions. What are you spending your time in getting? What are you spending your time to build? I try to say it is that I'm a solutions person. I always believe there has to be a way out. There has to be a way. There's something, there has to be a way. There has to be a better way. There has to be an alternative. You know, when I'm in an event or I'm in a place and I see people doing something, I have to think about it as in, how can this be better? How can this process be better? Why must the usher at the back run to the front to pick the, the, the tissue that just dropped on the stage? Why is there not somebody beside the stage? Is there a service director, for example? Is there someone else that can spot those things? How can things be done with excellence? And with time, you build yourself in those perceptions. You know, you're in a business today. How do you expand that business? Many years ago, I was, I was saying to people, I said, most times, I mean, some time ago, I used to like, I try to spot business opportunities and for fun, I just do some visibility studies and I just give it out. That was the time I used to charge for it anyway, so, but sometimes I just give it out. And I was saying to someone, I said, there's something I saw in Manchester a while back, whereby in a shopping mall, you had someone that just had like a food kiosk and they were selling African food. And I was saying, look, Lakeside is a very good place with a good footfall and someone should just open a kiosk there, just don't make it a restaurant. You discover that in fact, the people that will come there are not even Nigerians, they are not Africans. The Westerners, they want to appreciate our food, but they will not go to your African restaurant. But if they sit in a shopping mall and they walk by and they see fried rice and they see jello fries, they will patronize it. I said it to a few people and they were like, ah. I said, well, I don't know how to cook, don't ask. <laughs> I said, but if you do those kind of things, now I heard someone just opened that place and I was like, and I don't even know the person, but I was singing it to everybody around me. I said, look, this place is calling for this business. And there are so many ways. So time brings solutions, it brings perceptions, it brings healing. What can you do differently? It brings healing. What is that thing that you've gone through? I'll try and round up because of our time. There's quite a lot here, but God help me. I'll just, just try and round up. And it also brings development. But on the flip side, it brings degradation as well. If you don't improve where you are at, if that point is the set point and you are not improving it, definitely it will go down. If you don't improve your marriage, it will go down. Many years ago, I was saying to someone, someone like, ah, why do people like behaving like when you both people and all this stuff? You know, sometimes we just leave the house and just go to the movies. We've not done that in a while now. Sometimes we just go and just go and just go and spend the night in a hotel somewhere. Ah, so we just say, ah, 
go out to go and eat a meal. That is a bag of rice, okay? <laughs> you know? In the house, sometimes we order to the point that even the ordering place, they, they send us gifts. Because sometimes you say, you know what? Nobody wants to cook. Okay, no worry, don't cook. Everybody, for the sake of peace, let's just go and eat out. So if you don't try and do some things to improve it, it goes back the other way. But my prayer is we would have development in our various experiences in Jesus' name. And the last one which I will give is it brings maturity and experience. Like I said, there is something to learn from the elders, young ones. But at the same time, the, young, the older ones too as well should look at the logical ways in which the young ones are looking at things. You know? Look at the young ones and say, okay, what is happening? Now, most times I ask my boys, what is the new thing now? Sometimes they say to me, okay, if you do use this code, you can buy this from social and so places. I didn't know that. But they will bring those things to your attention because they have information. Sometimes I want to buy something. I say to the boys, I say, look, this and this is what I want to buy. Is there a way I can get it for a deal? Or I get it for a cheaper price? You know, but it will to put you through and to say to you that, look, this and this is what you need to do. So there are so many things we can learn from our young ones. But our young ones as well, there are so many things we can learn from our elders. But in all of it, God expects us to marry both sides. We should believe in God. We should trust God. We should, stop, we should trust the process. But at the same time, we should evolve. There are so many process, so many things which God has put into process. And I pray the Lord will balance that in our lives in Jesus' name. So lastly, what does processes produce? It brings efficiency, consistency, accountability, and quality. And above all, it brings continuous improvement. Where are you today? What have you seen? What are you doing in the next five years? Where do you see yourself in the next ten? As a church, as a people, where should we be in the next five years? Where is God taking us? As a home, what is the vision for that house? Where is God leading us to? Last night, myself and Pastor Sam were talking about uh, the younger generation and we we're saying to them that most of the time these days when you, when you try to speak to them and you say to them that ah, the guy say yes, you are ex so and so so age. Ah, we're not seeing girlfriend, we're not seeing... They'll be looking at you as in what in the world are you talking about? Whereas in those days on the streets, there are so many other things you've, you've learned some social skills as we're growing up easily. But the children of these days, they're so quiet. You know, sometimes when I'm saying some things that I did in some particular age, they're looking at me as in, how would you have done that in that age as in, how? But with process, we learn all these things. And I pray that the Lord would allow our younger ones to be mentored rightly in Jesus' name. And even as we mentor the younger ones, I pray we'll give them a balanced knowledge. Because that is sometimes where the conflict is. The young ones, they are trying to relate with what they can understand. But you are training them to just say to them, you know what, just supernatural and that's it. So, ah, you're not praying enough. Two hours. So yeah, go pray. <laughs> there are sometimes we need to know that there has to be a balance. You know, there has to be a balance. I remember the, uh, the older ones when they started working initially and I used to teach them about paying tight and stuff. And they just could not understand it. Why should I pay tight? It's my money. Why should I pay tight? And I had to say to them, I said, look, here's your money. <laughs> I said, uh, when you remove uh, zero from zero, what if that job is not there at all? I said that on one of the occasions, um, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure they're going to fight me later when I say all this. One of the occasions, you know, I had an issue with his car. And I said to him, I said, but you're struggling to pay your tight. I said, do you know how much you just coughed out to repair that car now? I said, if you have paid, I said, who's that deal? He said, but the car, we had not Another time, I said, look, I'm just telling you, if you do some particular things, God will take care of those other things for you. I said, that is when you need the supernatural. I said, you can debate it all you like. And I gave him a personal experience. I said, there was a time in my life which I felt... I had one or two ideas about how some monies were spent and I was upset. And I stopped paying. That period I, I suffered seriously. And that's just the point. I said, if the pastor like, let him use it to marry a new wife. I don't care. My own is, I will do my own bits. And whatever they want to do, let them do with it. And it's just, I mean, most of the time, because sometimes there are some things we need to, we need to 
we need to be bold about. You see, and that's why some of the people of the other religion, they will tell you some things categorically, this is it, and they will follow it. But you know, Christians, we are now being bullied into silence from, from scriptural truths. And we are being bullied into silence because of the times. Because all of a sudden now, it's not popular to come out and say, tight is good. Because they're wondering, no, you're not saying what you want to hear. The social media is trying to give us otherwise ideas. And I said, no, 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 it does not change the Bible. It does not change scriptures. It says, remove not the ancient landmark, which our forefathers have set, settled. So if you like, mm, healing and stuff, it starts from the Old Testament. All of a sudden now, you can believe in healing, but you don't want to believe in tight, which was also in the Old Testament. I said, well, okay, I say yes, I have said my own. But <laughs> You know, so, I mean, those are the kind of things we should help our younger ones to understand. And when they see that you understand process as well, you know, there are some things, most of the time, which, and I'll round up on this note, most of the times I've discovered that the older ones always feel as if they should just tell you something and you should just take it. Without having to understand, they're also coming from a perspective, from an idea. And all they need is illumination and understanding. You know, understand them, respect their views. I don't have an issue with your views. One of the things which my dad taught me as a young man was, your opinion is your opinion. Own it. This is my opinion. I stand to be corrected. Do you understand? Own it. I used to be into debates and stuff like that, so he used to like prep me for some of those talks and everything. And I would stand up and I would speak, and, I was, and then, trust me, I was very tiny like this, but I would stick to my... <laughs> To my, to my the, the, what's it called, to my subjects, and say, this is what I'm saying, and this is my opinion, and I'm standing by it. Amen. So I pray that the Lord will help our young ones to grow in Jesus' name. Can we just rise up on our feet? My time is well spent. Hallelujah. Hope we got something today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to just pray just one prayer point. You know, be old, be young. We are all children of the Most High. Why don't let's just speak to him and say, Father, direct me. Lead me in the way that you would have me go. Help me to get to that expected end. Help me to get to that place of glory in my finances, in my marital life, in my relationships, in my work with you. The Bible says you will hear a voice from behind you saying this is the way you walk in it. And there are sometimes that even the young ones, for adventure you're here this morning and you feel you've just, you've just wandered away. And you don't want to even admit because you don't feel as if you don't want anyone to judge you. Or you won't feel as if you're being judged even by your parents or whoever is around you. This is a safe space this morning. I want you to talk to God yourself directly. And say, Father, help me. Help me. The 12 stones which the children of Israel took from the Jordan River up until this day, it is stacked upon the other. And that talks about the power of God. After the due order. It's when the altar is set aright, that is when the fire will come down. Thank you, Jesus.